6. What nothing earthly gives or can destroy, the soul's calm sunshine and the heartfelt joy, is virtue's prize. A better would you fix? Then give humility a coach and six, justice, is, justice a conqueror's sword, or truth a gown, or public spirit, its great cure a crown. Weak, foolish man, will heaven reward us there with the same trash-mad mortals wish for here? The boy and man an individual makes, yet sighest thou now for apples and for cakes? Go like the Indian in another life, expect thy dog, thy bottle, and thy wife. As well as dream, such trifles are assigned as toys and empires for a godlike mind. Rewards that either would to virtue bring no joy or be destructive of the thing. How oft by these at sixty are undone the virtues of a saint at twenty-one. To whom can riches give repute or trust, con content or pleasure, but the good and just? Judges and senates have been bought for gold, esteem and love were never to be sold. O oh, fool, to think God hates the worthy mind, the lover and the love of humankind, whose life is healthful and whose conscience clear because he wants a thousand pounds a year. Honor and shame from no condition rise, act well your part, there all the honor lies. Fortune in men has some small difference made, one flaunts in rags, one flutters in brocade. The cobbler aproned and the parson gowned, the friar hooded and the monarch crowned. What differ more, you cry, than crown and cowl? I'll tell you, friend, a wise man and a fool. You'll find, if once the monarch acts the monk, or cobbler like, the parson will be drunk. Worth makes the man, and want of it the fellow. The rest is all but leather or prune. Prunella. Stuck o'er with titles and hung round with strings, that thou mayst be by kings or whores of kings, boast the pure blood of an illustrious race, in quiet flow from Lucrece to Lucrece. But by your father's worth, if yours you rate, count me those only who were good and great. Go if your ancient but ignoble blood has crept through scoundrels ever since the flood. Go and pretend your family is young, n nor own your fathers have been fools so long. What can ennoble sots, or slaves, or cowards? Alas, not all the blood of all the Howards. Look next on greatness. Say where greatness lies. Where? But among the heroes and the wise. Heroes are much the same, the points agreed, from Macedonia's madman to the Swede. The whole strange purpose of their lives to find or make an enemy of all mankind. Not one looks backward. Onward still he goes, yet ne'er looks forward, farther than his nose. No less alike the polite, politic, and wise, all sly, slow things with circumspective eyes. Men in their loose, unguarded hours they take, not that themselves are wise, but others weak, but grant that those can conquer. These can cheat. Tis phrase absurd to call a villain great. Who wickedly is wise or madly brave is but the more a fool, the more a knave. Who noble ends by noble means obtains or failing smiles in exile or in chains. Like good Aurelius let him reign or bleed like Socrates. That man is great indeed. What's fame? A fancied life in others' breath, a thing beyond us. And even before our death, just what you hear you have, and what's unknown the same, my lord, if Tully's or your own. All that we feel of it begins and ends in the small circle of our foes and friends. To all beside, as much an empty shade, and Eugene living, or a Caesar dead. Alike or when or where they shone or shine, or on the Rubicon or on the Rhine, a wit's a feather and a chief a rod, an honest man's the noblest work of God. Fame but from death a villain's name can save, as justice tears his body from the grave. When to oblivion bet, when what to oblivion better were resigned is hung on high to poison half mankind. All fame is foreign, but of true desert, plays round the head, 
but comes not to the heart. One self-approving hour whole years outweighs of stupid starters and of loud huzzas. And more true joy Marcellus exiled feels than Caesar with a senate at his heels. In parts superior what advantage lies? Tell, for you can, what it is to be wise. Tis but to know how little can be known, to see all others false and feel our own, condemned in business or in arts to drudge without a second or without a judge. Truths would you teach or save a sinking land, all fear, none aid, you and few understand, painful preeminence yourself to view above likes life's weakness and its comforts too. Bring then the blessings to a strict account, make fair deductions, see to what they mount, how much of other each is sure to cost, how each for other oft is wholly lost, how inconsistent greater goods with these, how sometimes life is risked and always ease. Think, and if still the things that thy envy call, say, wouldst thou be the man to whom they fall? To sigh for ribbons, if thou art so silly, mark how they grace Lord Umbra or Sir Billy. Is yellow dirt the passion of thy life? Look but on Gripus or on Gripus's wife. If parts allure thee, think how bacon shined, the wisest, brightest, meanest of mankind, or ravished with the whistling of a name, see Cromwell damned to everlasting fame. If all united thy ambition call, from ancient story learn to scorn them all. There in the rich, the honored, famed, and great, see the false scale of happiness complete. In hearts of kings, or arms of queens who lay, how happy, those to ruin, these betray. Mark by what wretched steps their glory grows from dirt and seaweed as proud Venice rose. In each how guilt and greatness equal ran, and all that raised the hero sunk the man. Now Europe's laurels on their brows behold, but stained with blood or ill exchanged for gold. Then see them broke with toils or sunk in ease, or infamous for plundered provinces. O oh, wealth ill-fated, which no act of fame e'er taught to shine, or sanctified from shame! What greater bliss attends their, their, their close of life? Some greedy minion or imperious wife, the trophied arches, storied halls invade, and haunt their slumbers in the pompous shade. Alas, not dazzled with their noontide ray, compute the morn and evening to the day. The whole amount of that enormous fame, a tale, that blends their glory with their shame.